everyone welcome back to my channel i hope you are all doing well my very first resin of 2022 and oh my goodness some of you may remember this i did back in halloween i'm using a similar technique i like to call it the shove it all in method using tattoos foils inclusions and all of these things we are going botanical and i'm in love let's go madly in love with the botanical vibe right now i don't know what came over me but the next few weeks the next few videos at least are gonna be all about botanicals i got these stunning pressed leaves from amazon everything i use in the video are going to be linked down below i'm also using the temporary tattoos you know i love me a tattoo i'm using garden stones silver foil and I'm showing you that pink, but I end up not using it. So huge thank you again to Daniel Cooper who designed my brand new intro, which you just saw there. Let me know that you absolutely love it as much as me. So the first thing I'm going to do, this is a little bit sped up guys, because it's a long video. I had one and a half hours of film and I've reduced it to something like 20 something minutes. Yeah, anyway, these are temporary tattoos that you get to put on your own skin. So they work perfectly with resin and you use them pretty much the same way. So the first thing I'm doing is cutting out my roses, pretty much how I want them to be in the trays. So I'm just cutting edges off just to make them fit easier. And then I'm flipping them over to fit the base of the trays. What you wanna do then is exactly what you would do if you were putting them on your skin and that is to wet the backs. So they do have some protective film. Peel the film off, make sure you do that because they won't stick otherwise. Peel that protective clear film off and press them down into your molds. Then you're gonna get a wet cloth, which you see me doing here, just dabbing it all over the backs of those tattoos. Like I said, pretty much the same as you would if you were applying them to your arms or your legs and making sure that the backs of those papers are totally saturated. I was hoping to tuck these edges down around the edge, but really it just, it wasn't worth fighting over and I just left them as is. So like I say, you just wanna make sure that back is saturated before you peel off the tattoos, very similar to your arms and legs. Now, one thing I will say is that make sure that you um, leave them to dry completely. As soon as you've wet the paper, peeled off the backs, make sure that they are dry before you put any epoxy resin on. And I think I waited about half an hour before I poured any resin on. Resin and water do not mix and it would have been just, yeah, it would have been disastrous. Loads of holes, loads of air bubbles. But here you see me sliding the paper off. Now I tend to slide, but you can see there it did peel a little bit of leaf away. Nothing major, did not have an impact on the final piece, but I tend to slide my papers off. You can do it anyway. Also, if you are interested in using temporary tattoos, these of course will be linked below. You can either put them straight in the silicon mold like you see me doing here, or you can wait until your epoxy resin is fully cured, demolded, and then put tattoos on your piece. Either way, you have to know that they do need to be top coated because these tattoos do come out sticky at the end, but I'm gonna go through all of that as well. Now I did change my mind. I was gonna use the resin eight, but I wanted something extra special, pearly mica powder. Guys, resin pro mica powders are up there as my favorite mica powders I've ever used. So here we go, mask is on. I'm mixing my resin for five minutes until it is crystal clear. The instructions mostly say mix for three, but I do like to mix mine for five. It's personal preference, just process of elimination in case anything goes wrong. If anything goes wrong, I know it wasn't my mixing. That's, that's key. So here I am just transferring that resin out into four or five pots to be able to mix up all of the individual colors. You did see a hint of me there, pouring some directly on the mold. Now that is in preparation to stick the leaves down. I want the leaves to be on crystal clear resin. So you'll see here in a moment, I actually did pour some resin. You can see there quite clearly actually <laughs> that I did pour some resin 
on the bases of the molds. This is so that I can lay the leaves down in clear. Now the resin I'm using is Turbo and this is a really quick curing resin. It takes four to five hours to cure. So that was my thought process. If I use Turbo, it's going to allow me to layer these and then pour the next level quite quickly. But I want to make sure that these leaves are going to remain in the clear. I don't want any colored resin seeping under them obstructing their view. I hope that makes sense. So here you see me just spreading it out with my gloved hand. Always wear your gloves guys. I've got nitrile gloves if anyone is interested if you're watching this for the very first time. Never seen resin before. Nitrile gloves are the one. They are also linked below. I am just smoothly, slowly, delicately laying these leaves down. Now again you can do this anyway. I know that some people coat their leaves and flowers in resin before they add them to resin but for me I knew that I was top coating afterwards anyway so any air bubbles would be kind of covered up with that top coat yeah that is what you see me doing I'm just coating them making sure that they've got resin to stick to because in a moment I'm going to add all of those colors that you saw me mixing up the pink the green and the and the cream they're going to be added in around the edges only the one I'm doing right now the one you see me doing right now this actually ended up being my favorite and I have to say I have to say now this is the best resin I've ever done this is the best resin hands down that I've ever done they are my favorite results I've already moved on and I'm already on my third project after this one because I am head over heels in love with the results so yeah that is it for the leaves I've put the leaves down they're all quite happy in their place I'm not adding color on top of the leaves I'm going around the edges with the clear and silver foil I'm also adding in the pink the green and the cream resin pro mica powders around the edges I do bring some of the pink up on top of the tattoos because I'm not so worried at that point that they're going to seep under the leaves but this is honestly all I'm doing I want those edges filled and then it's a case of walking away <laughs> this is the hardest part for me walking away and coming back a couple of hours later when I know nothing's gonna seep under those leaves this is the key to this kind of video, guys. You have to trust the process. I was telling myself, trust the process, Claire. Put it all in, shove it all in, see what happens, see what the results are, because I knew in my gut, I just knew it wouldn't be ugly. <laughs> if anything else, it wouldn't be ugly. At least I was hoping, I was hoping. So this was three hours later. Now I'm filling up the molds. The resin I'm using is Vista Turbo. Like I said, it's a five hour solid cure. So I knew after three hours, nothing was getting under those leaves and the stones. Guys, I did add stones and I didn't film it because I completely forgot. So I went back in, you can see the stones there. I did add stones after I stopped filming. Sorry about that, but I added them in all the clear spaces. Now the way I'm pouring this resin in has absolutely no, there's no rhyme or reason to it. I'm just pouring it in and hoping for the best. And oh gosh, I'm telling you now the results are out of this world like I said it is my favorite resin to date to date it is my cup of tea right up my street and I feel like I found my niche I feel like this is where my heart lies all of this kind of inclusions adding lots of inclusions so here you see me adding some clear this is really just to help that resin blend and disperse and do what resin does Again, you can't control resin. This is the thing. I could plan it, I could prepare it, but this resin's just gonna do what it wants anyway. So I figured, pour it in, see what it does, hope for the best. Here's a clear up just after I, I poured. A close up, should I say? Not a clear up. Here's a close up just after I poured. I blasted them with my heat tool and that was it. I came back 24 hours later and uh, demolded. Right, we are 24 hours later. I am telling you, I knew at this point I was in love. So I actually added some stones to the back. When I filled them up, 
I could still see some clear spaces and I thought, let me throw some stones in there because why not? <laughs> That's kind of how I'm feeling about this project. Just go for it. You know, no rules, no limits. Throw it all in and just, oh, pray. Just pray. <laughs> but the backs look absolutely beautiful. And yeah, at this point, I didn't know what to expect. I was thinking, you know, they're either going to look absolutely stunning or they're they're just going to look like, I don't know, like an undercooked turkey on Christmas Day. That was my thought process. Luckily for me, and I hope you guys love them as much as I do. Luckily for me, they came out spectacular and without a shadow of a doubt, my favourite resin I've ever done. Okay, tray number one. Are we ready? Oh my gosh. I actually, <laughs> oh my gosh, look at this. Un believable. I was so happy at this point. I actually decided to keep the original voice in, but no, at the no, it just didn't work. I was mumbling and stumbling and I knew I had to do a voiceover because I literally was I was on the rooftop screaming. So here we are, a close up of that very first one that I loved. I knew that really um thin leaf. I don't know where it comes from. This one here. Oh my gosh love it love the effect of it love the effect of these ferns with the stones as well that i placed in and under and the fact that the pink is behind the tattoo i love the pink behind the tattoos it really makes them pop so i was chuffed to bits at this point i was kind of like oh my gosh oh my gosh look at this look at this in my brain you know as as i go but yeah really love it and all of the little elements that you add in, it just gives a point of interest. It gives you something to look at. And some I was kind of looking at it thinking, wow, I'm seeing something new every time. And I love the way the stones look. It all ties together with the natural environment, apart from the silver foil. <laughs> we don't find silver foil in the garden. But it works. It just works. I love the stones that have been pushed down inside the rim. All of it. Everything about it I love. I know I usually mess up somewhere along the line, but honestly, I love it. What I need to do now is give these a top coat because at this point, these tattoos are sticky to touch. Um, but again, I'm going to show you that when I do all three of them together. But in love, in love. So this is the second one and I immediately saw because one of the leaves actually bled out green and I wasn't expecting it and I think this is the one where the leaf bled out green into the resin but it's not really noticeable because I put green mica powder behind that leaf so it doesn't really show up but look at this oh my gosh. I am in love with this one for a different reason. The roses on the right hand side have almost got no colour under them. There is some pink, but it's not so, it's not as pink as the other one. And I love how I put the stones in the back that are just peeping through the clear. And then the tattoo lays over that fern, that leaf. Oh, I, yeah. R honestly, I don't even have the words. I don't even have the words to describe the feeling I got. When I demolded these, you can see some clear sections, which I just think adds to it. And it was at this point, I just felt like I need to do more of this. I, I need to do more of this. I love the way it made me feel. I love how happy I was when I was making them. Everything about these, I love. The video, everything. So I'm hoping you're with me. I'm hoping you're still here. We're nearly 14 minutes in. If you are, thank you so, so much. Obsessed, obsessed. The final one. Now, honestly, this is the one where I actually think the leaf did bleed out because I knew I had one leaf bleed out, but I feel like there may now have been two. And this one's more noticeable because it's not got the green mica powder behind it. I feel like it's more noticeable. And this tray had the least green mica out of the three. So this one had more pink, whereas the others had a lot more green added. But I mean, I'm still in love. There's nothing I don't like about it. You can see where I'm putting my hand under. It's clear and yeah, I don't know what else to say apart from I'm in love. I cannot wait to do more. I've already done more and I hope you love them as much as you love this one. And yeah, I'm head over heels 
in love. Everything will be linked below. The moulds, the, the tattoos, the leaves. I'll see if I can find the stones, but I got these stones from my local garden centre, so might not be able to link them. And the foil, all linked below. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know what colours you would do, because I've already moved on, trying out other things as well. And yeah, my excitement on this project was real, genuinely high. <laughs> like, genuinely high. Uh, it took me a long while to come down from making these. And I, part of me thinks they're not going to be everyone's cup of tea. And that's perfectly fine. But because I'm head over heels in love with them, I cannot wait to try more. The next thing I really need to do right now is give them all a top coat. So you really only want to give maybe half a mil deep top coat to seal those tattoos in. The rest of it is all sealed in. Obviously the leaves and the stones and the foil, they all went into resin, but the tattoos are sticky. So we need to top coat them and I'm going to show you how I do that now. So I've just mixed up a small pot of resin. We do not need much. We still want them to function as trays. So we still need that lip to work as a lip. <laughs> we don't want anything sliding off. So here you see me just putting a little bit into each tray. Now we know that resin is self-leveling anyway, but I do give it a helping hand. I go back in and add a little bit more to each one until I can pretty much see that yeah, that's enough resin to go to the edges. I have done this before where I've not put enough resin in and the resin has pulled away from the edge, leaving gaps and leaving craters. We don't want to do that. So what you see me do here is just move the trays around until all of that resin has reached all of the edges. And here we are, 24 hours later, all done, top coated, sealed. I honestly, yeah. I don't know what else to say at this point. I love them so much. I literally love them so much. And I am so excited for you guys to see the next video. So on Saturday the 15th, I've got a huge, huge project coming. Saturday the 15th. It's going to be a collaboration with Wendy from Toonpish Crafts. And uh, yeah, I can't say any more about it at this point. But here is a close up. Let me know your thoughts. Thank you if you've stayed with me this long. We are nearly 18 minutes in, which is a long video for me. I appreciate you all massively. Happy New Year as well. Oh my gosh. Happy New Year. Thanks again to Daniel Cooper. And a huge thank you and shout out to my patrons. My patrons actually chose the thumbnail for this video. They are unbelievably helpful. So thank you to you guys as well. If you are interested in becoming a patron of my channel, they've seen this project for a while now. I've been keeping them updated every step of the way. So they do get to see things before I post them on my YouTube channel. And if you are interested, then do check out the description box below. And yeah, thanks to them. And thank you all for watching. I appreciate you all. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye. Thank you.